Rural America makes up 20% of the country. So that's basically like 60 million people. I don't know how you win elections if you write off 60 million people. We need rural folks to feel seen. Like if folks don't feel seen by progressives or the left, there's not a lot of reason to kind of stick with us. There is not enough progressive help in rural communities for people to make meaning of what's happening in the country. So whether that's changing demographics, changing economic conditions, changes in popular culture, if we're not present, the only folks that are gonna help people make meaning are the right, often the extreme right, often white nationalists. I think it was a pretty common response uh, was to blame rural folks and rural white folks. And I think that kind of an assumption of rural communities, especially majority white rural communities, as basically nothing but Trump country. I think a lot of people even today might picture the Confederate flag waving white guy that's like showing up at the, to have a counter protest against the Black Lives Matter rally. Like that is a thing. That is a thing for sure. But it's not the whole thing. You have all these people who are fighting for racial, economic, gender, and climate justice. Rural America is way more diverse than most people think. The fastest growing population in rural America is the Latinx community. Up until recently, Black Americans were the second largest racial group in rural America. Like Huge swaths of the rural South are majority Black and half of the country's Native Americans live in rural communities. Half of our canvassers who are going out into rural communities that are majority white to have conversations about race are people of color. And I think one, it's super courageous. Two, it's super effective. The canvassers are moving people on the doors to think differently about anti-black racism, about immigration, about anti-Chinese sentiment, like we're having progress and we have studies that show it's working. And then on the other end, the canvassers across race are like, oh, I think I'm done writing people off because I'm having too many good conversations. We ask people really three things like, what issues do you care about the most? Um, what do you see as the solutions? And lastly, like, who and what do you think is responsible for the declining conditions here? And I mean, the biggest finding really was people really appreciated being asked. Then we took the data from those 10,000 conversations. And if people said, we really care about clean water, healthcare, addiction, we then ran campaigns to win on those issues. And in the process, people moved into a multiracial organizing context. And suddenly we're in rooms with people that they may have lived in the same community with forever, but had never sat down and really done anything together. one percent of the people we had these deep phone conversations with switched support from Trump to plans to support Biden. And eight and a half percent of independent women voters had switched from planning to vote for Trump to planning to vote for Biden, all off a 15 minute phone conversation with a total stranger. What I love about this deep canvassing model is it's impacting the canvas, but it's also impacting the canvasser. And so I think you start to see some of this healing that everybody says we need actually happens, but it happens through personal relationship and kind of wonderfully, people are shifting their views on issues of race based on a 15 to 20 minute conversation with somebody they never met. I think right now we're at a crossroads where we can be like, hey, you and I don't see eye to eye. I don't wanna be in a relationship with you, goodbye. Or another way we could be is like, hey, I want to understand what you're up against. I want to understand your struggles. And I want to understand how you came to see the world the way you do. And I'm going to be vulnerable with you and share how I'm struggling, what I'm up against, and how I came to see the world the way I do. We don't have to see eye to eye right now, 
but we should keep talking. And I think that's a much more courageous, hopeful route for us to go. Thank you.